Today's video is jam-packed with so many things. I'm gonna take you thrifting. We're gonna create some amazing thrifted decor pieces. I have a fun announcement and the look for less is back. So you wanna stick around for this one. Hey there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to Mi Casa, where I share high-end home decor and DIYs on a budget as well as extreme before and after room transformations. If that is something you enjoy, please make sure to subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. So in today's video, I am creating some beautiful thrifted pieces. You won't believe how much they ended up costing and how easy they were to make. But before, I do want to say the Look for Less Challenge is back and I have all of the details on how you can participate this month towards the end of this video. I'll list the rules and the date your projects are due. So make sure you stick around at the end to get all of those details. As for my announcement, it has something to do with me meeting Debbie from Debbie's Design Diary and I'll share more details throughout the video. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I love finding unexpected treasures and inexpensive items to decorate my home or to make DIYs out of. And as I mentioned in my last video, my husband took me to a workshop in South Carolina last month where I got to meet some amazing women. Now on our way up there, I told my husband that I wanted to stop by almost every single thrift or secondhand store that was on our way. And as you can see here, my husband really couldn't figure out what to do with himself since he usually doesn't go thrifting with me, but he was a good sport and he ended up enjoying it just the same. Now I didn't pick up a ton of stuff, but it was nice to go down the aisles and just get inspired and see what I could come across that would help me create something for my home. Now, one of the things that I picked up were these glass pieces and they look like small mini cloches. They could have maybe even been part of a candelabra or something, but they were only 50 cents a piece. They were a nice clear solid glass, well made, and honestly, I just had to have them. Even though I still, at this point when I picked them up, had no idea what I would make with them. About a week after we came back from our trip, I came across this advertisement on Facebook Marketplace and this woman was selling two of these balusters, I think that's how you say them, or banisters, I don't know. She was selling these two beautiful pieces for only $10 for the set and I picked them up right away. I really wanna make the best of these pieces, so this first DIY, we're gonna be using this bottom portion and I will be cutting them at two different heights, one here and the second one a little bit higher. So my husband went ahead and cut them down for me. And he removed the bolts that were sticking out from underneath them. And I had these rings that I just purchased from Amazon. I'll link to them in the description box below. And these were perfect to go right above. Now, if you notice, the base of these also has little rings and this was the perfect finishing touch. And so that it looked a little bit more finished instead of just a piece lopped off. And I just used some wood glue to adhere them to the top. and I just put some paint on top of them in order to hold them down while they dried. Once the wooden pieces were adhered, I gave the candlesticks a good cleaning and then it was ready for paint. I'll be using a DIY paint in a gypsy green. Now, if you don't know much about DIY paint, it is actually made of all natural ingredients. It is made right here in the United States. It is highly pigmented because it is clay based and it has no acrylic or no latex in it. So when I met Debbie late last year, 
her and I had some great conversations. And one of the conversations that we had was the possibility of me becoming one of her paint retailers. Now you guys know that I love DIY paint, especially the clear wax that she has in her line. I've used it several times and always shared that particular one because I do think it's the best out there. But I've never thought myself of actually selling it. And it took a little bit of convincing. I was a little scared. And right now I am working on building my website so I can add all of those products there so that you can purchase them directly from me whenever you see me using them on any of my DIY projects. I'll be sharing more about her paint and all of her products as I work through different projects here on my channel and share more about them as I use them for my DIYs. So if you've ever thought about getting any of her products, just know that you can get them from me and I will be announcing in the community tab the minute the store is open on my website. So that was the exciting news that I had to share with you all. Now when painting, I made sure to get all of the nooks and crevices of each of the candlesticks. Now you can certainly leave them with one coat of page because this is a darker color. However, I did go ahead and give it two coats. And as you can see by the dried portion already that this paint actually dries a little bit lighter. Now when you seal it with the wax, you will see that it will deepen and bring out that color once again. Once that layer is dry, I'm gonna use that DIY clear wax and apply it all over. While that wax is still tacky, I am sprinkling some of that white decrepit dust and I'm using my brush to incorporate it throughout. This dust is going to catch into all of the brush strokes and all of the nooks and crevices and really bring more details out. Next, I'm taking my white wax and I am gonna work it in with a small artist brush in all of those little crevices and creases and lines throughout. And then with a damp cloth, I'm just gonna wet to stress it. Now, not all of the wax will come off as you will see, but I do want to get some of those edges and take it down to the very first original color of the banister. I'm not necessarily going for a farmhouse look. I'm going for a more antique, worn, something that has aged over time and just looks really nice and authentic and made to look like it was originally this way. And of course, once the first one is complete, I do the exact same thing to the second one. I let those two pieces cure overnight before I do the next step. And that is add these little mini cloches or glass pieces. I'm not really sure what they were again initially, but they're gonna work perfect for this. And I'm simply gonna take some E6000 and add it on to the top of the candlestick. Now remember that ring that I added onto the top of the original baluster that we cut 
well that's gonna help with the bottom of this glass piece because it's completely rounded but this little ring makes like a pocket and it fits right in it and then of course using a level I made sure that it adhered on in the correct manner and everything was nice and straight the last thing I wanted was for a lopsided piece of glass at the very top of this Of course, I did this to both, and once they were dry, this is how they turned out. And of course, it would be my luck that while filming this video, I did not have candles small enough to go inside the glass pieces. <laughs> and one thing I do want to note is that I did put some felt on the bottoms of all these pieces so that I can protect my surfaces. Now for this next DIY, I'm just going to start off and say that it was a total failure and I had to do something totally different. I got these silver plates in one of those thrift shops on my way to my workshop last month. Each of these was 99 cents even though they were all different sizes. And they looked a little worn and a little patinaed, but I actually like the fact that they look a little bit more antique. Now the first thing I did was clean them with a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend to kind of get any grime off of them and give them a little bit new shine. You can really tell a difference if you put the plates side by side. You can see one is much brighter and the other one has a kind of a yellow tint to it. And you can really see what Barkeeper's Friend can do right here on the back of the plate it takes all of that off. So my initial DIY idea was going to be that I was going to create a beautiful antique looking tear tray and unfortunately when I was adhering all the pieces together they just wouldn't sit still. They kept sliding, they weren't staying level, they would keep turning. I was at this for quite a while before I gave up. It's okay sometimes you just have to think of something else. So I cleaned them back up I took some burlap out and I decided to make a piece for the wall. And so I cut a piece of burlap about three inches wide, enough for me to place all three plates on it. And for something like this, I do like to use my rotary blade. It makes it so much easier. And I have a list of my most often used supplies in my description box below. I always have it on there in case you guys are wondering where I get some of my uh, supplies in order to create these DIYs. Next, I have this wired jute on hand. This one is from Dollar Tree. And I cut a little bit out in order to create a small wreath that I wanted to accompany the plates. I doubled the wired jute onto itself and then I tied the end pieces together to hold it still with some jute twine. And I'm using a greenery bush that I had on hand. I believe this one was from Walmart. And I'm basically plugging all of the little pieces from the greenery bush and I'm gonna adhere them on with some hot glue in order to create a mini wreath. I would add each sprig individually and I would make sure that the previous one covered the base of the new one that was being glued down, that way you couldn't see where it was adhered. And I kept applying them in the same direction so they looked like they fanned out. And then I took some hot glue and adhered the silver plates onto the piece of burlap. Now, this is not permanent because eventually I might use these little plates for that tear tray. I figured I'd use some hot glue. Now it will stay on there, but because it is metal, you can pull this off 
and just eventually remove all of the hot glue entirely from it. I adhered them from smallest to largest. Next, I took a round dowel and cut it with my miter shears. And I hot glued it onto the top portion of the burlap. Then I hot glued and wrapped some jute string on either end of the dowel so that I have a place to hang it from. Next, I just added the wreath on the center little plate. However, you can keep it blank if you want to, and this is how it turned out. And for this DIY, we're going to be using this top portion. My husband cut this for me as well. He was outside working in his work tent, so it was no problem. And he cut off the bottom as close as he can get it to where it was a nice, smooth, level bottom. But using as much of that square as possible. And then I asked him to cut it straight down the center so I can create two pieces. Next, we took some butcher block remnants from our bathroom renovation that we're still completing and we cut them down to size. With this one board, we were able to cut down both backs and bottoms for each of the bookends. Next, I use some wood glue to adhere the back piece along to the bottom piece. You can nail these as well, however, it was really cold outside and I didn't feel like going outside and using the nail gun, so I decided just to glue them down and use some clamps in order to hold them together. And honestly, this works just fine since these are just gonna go on some shelves. I did the same thing for each of the halves of the banister tops. I just used some wood glue and I used some clamps to hold it together while it dried. Now while I had the clamps holding it down, I took some wood filler and filled in the holes that were in the bottom square piece on either side. Once the glue was dry, I removed the clamps, I sanded down the sides where I added some wood filler, and then I wiped everything down making sure the surface was nice and clean. When they were ready to paint, I used Debbie's Design Diaries Sandy Blonde. This is the same color that I used for my cute little cloche stand that I redid in my last video. I'll link that video in the cards above and in the description box below in case you haven't seen it. But I really love what the combination of that color does with wax. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a few minutes. Now I made sure to cover everything thoroughly, making sure that I get all of the nooks and crevices. And I gave both pieces two coats of paint. Now this paint actually dries pretty quickly and after it was dry, I applied some of the DIY clear wax. This is my favorite wax to use. And as you can see, it kind of changes the color a little bit, brings it out a little bit more and deepens it. And you're gonna wanna make sure you get it all over and in all of the nooks and crevices. Now while the clear wax was still a little tacky, I took some of my favorite white decrepit dust and just sprinkled it like some snow on top of it. Now what you're gonna wanna do is after you sprinkle it on top, you're gonna wanna take your brush 
and just spread it throughout making sure that it gets into all of the little brush strokes, grooves, crevices of your piece. And as I'm adding my decrepit dust, I also like to get a small artist brush and I get some of the white wax and place it in all of the little fine areas that are a little bit harder to get and fill in because I really want to pronounce all of those lines and those grooves. And then after I kind of draw in those lines with the wax, I come back with another brush and I just smooth everything out. That way it doesn't look so harsh and the transition between waxed edge and um, soft surface is a little bit smoother. I then came back with a little bit more wax and highlighted all of the edges of the banister piece. Now to give you an idea of the difference of these waxes and this application, here's the side by side of one that only has the clear wax versus the other one that has the white and the decrepit dust and all of those beautiful layers that I created earlier doing those different techniques. It almost looks like stone or cement. It's a really beautiful finish. And here is what the pair looks like when it's all said and done. By the way, I don't know if you realize, but there's still portions of these remaining after I've done these DIYs. So I'm saving those pieces for a future thrifted video. Stay tuned for that. Now for this last piece of decor, this really isn't a DIY, but I did want to share this beautiful picture in six glasses that I was able to find. I have been really enjoying adding green touches to my home, especially if you recall my recent dining room makeover. And if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll go ahead and link to it above and below in my description box. But I just wanted to mention and share that you don't always have to buy secondhand in order to remake. Sometimes you can come across some amazing deals and the items are perfectly fine just the way they are. This picture and six glasses in perfect condition only cost me $15 from one of the little booths that I visited when I went up to South Carolina. So that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I think that even though the plate idea didn't come out as I had originally planned because my first DIY just did not work out, I still think it's absolutely charming on my wall. Let me know in the comments below which one of these was your favorite and make sure to hit like if you enjoyed this video, it really does help my channel. All right, for those waiting for the Look For Less Challenge details, here they are. Now, if you're new here and don't know what the Look For Less Challenge is, here is what it entails. It's a challenge where I ask you to recreate something from a high-end home decor store, but do it for a whole lot less. Now, this challenge is one that I created very early on when I started my channel, and I brought it back throughout the years. I'm hoping to bring it back every other month. So, fingers crossed we can keep it that way. So, if you wish to participate, there are a few rules. Rule number one, you have two weeks to complete the challenge. The projects and videos are due on Wednesday, January 26th at 10 a.m. That is Wednesday, January 26th at 10 a.m. Rule number two, make sure you mention your host, which is me, Yami, the Latina Next Door, and share my video channel in your description box, as well as a link to the playlist that I will provide for you that day so that you can add your videos to it. Rule number three, it has to be a home decor piece. It could be as small as a napkin ring or as large as a piece of furniture. That one is up to you. Rule number four, you have to show your recreated piece 
next to the original inspiration because we want to see how well you did and how much you saved. This challenge really is so much fun because it causes us to really think and try to create something ourselves instead of going out and purchasing something that is most likely overpriced. Again, that playlist will be in my description box once my video goes live so that you can add your videos when you choose to participate and you can see what other creators made for their projects in case you have been eyeing something and somebody just happens to recreate it for you. I'm looking forward to what you create. So yeah, that was it for this video. I know it was a lot, but I really hope you enjoyed it and I'm excited for so many great things to come this new year. I hope you guys are doing well and I will see you guys next week with another home decor and DIY video. Until then, adios.